There are people in solitary for 40 years. 40. You know, 40. Wouldn't you think that a judge would say, 40 years, there's something weird here, isn't yeah. there? Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today we're talking with veteran journalist James Ridgway. Over the years, he's worked for The New Republic, The Village Voice, The Wall Street Journal, and Mother Jones currently in Washington, D.C. He's the guy who found out that General Motors was tailing Ralph Nader. He helped produce the great 1992 documentary, Feed, which showcased the behind-the-scenes antics of would-be presidents and candidates. Jim, your current project is solitarywatch.com, which is dedicated to exploring the extent and trouble with solitary confinement in American prisons. What's the state of solitary confinement in America? Well, the, well, the big thing about solitary confinement is nobody knows. I mean, it's like a black site, only there are like hundreds, maybe thousands of black sites all over the country. These are sections of prisons, whole prisons, little tiny parts of prisons in which people are held incommunicado. Right, and uh, at solitarywatch.com, the website that uh, kind of warehouses your information, you've got figures up there that there's something like 80,000 plus people that we know of who are in some form of solitary confinement. Absolutely, well a lot of people would like to say there were a lot fewer, but if you go by the, you know, the standard accepted big deal institutions that count mm -hmm. figures like this, 80,000 is Pretty, pretty normal. Right. That's what they say. Now, is, is the number growing of people who are held in some kind of uh, solitary confinement? Well, I think it probably is growing, and one of the reasons for that is that a lot of the people in solitary, maybe maybe 30 uh, percent, maybe more than that, are mentally ill. So you know, they take somebody who's acting out, as they say, in the general population, and they say, well, he's not answering the guard, or you know. And they put him in solitary, and of course he gets crazier and crazier, like a guy I'm writing to in upstate New York. He tried to burn his cell down to commit suicide, and so they took him out to the local DA. They reindicted him for arson, gave him more years, and sent him back to the same place. It costs a lot more money. I mean, your, your website has stats where it could be as much as three times to house somebody in a solitary unit as to have them in the general population. It, it, it costs, the figures are usually $75,000 um, a year against, for general population, maybe $25,000. Uh, well, what should be done? I know uh, the Senate, uh, Senate subcommittee headed by Dick Durbin, a uh, senator from Illinois, uh, has just held hearings on the, the widespread use of solitary confinement. Where is that heading? What are your, uh, what are your pref preferred kind of policy solutions to uh, the problems posed well, by solitary? Well, first of all, it's absolutely almost totally impossible to get anywhere in the United States on this thing because the courts are totally lined up against changing anything and the lawyers, you know, are, the, are pretty much the same mindset. The government, I mean, uh, Obama says we don't torture. But this is tort a lot of this is straight out torture. So, and, and, and by that you mean the practice of solitary confinement in other settings, in international settings and whatnot, is either considered or approximates torture. Yes, the, the UN and and we call it torture. We call, you know, uh, Guantanamo and, and Af Afghanistan torture, and we just never look at our own right. stuff. So what what should be done? Well, I mean the. What should be done is to get rid of it, but what can maybe be done is to reduce the length of time. I mean, there are people in solitary for 40 years. 40? You know, 40. Wouldn't you think that a judge in a state, this is in Louisiana, that the appellate court or the, the federal judges would say, 40 years, there's something weird here, isn't yeah. there? They just go on and on with it. They'll keep people in solitary for the end of, till the end of their lives, and in fact, there is a big effort now to replace the death penalty with some kind of uh, penal sol solitary for life. In other words, an 18-year-old guy goes in for the rest of his life. And one law professor is arguing that he should be made the most miserable possible human being. He should receive the worst food. He should receive no amenities of any kind. He should, in other words, the retribution should be intense. So this is a humane alternative yes. to just executing and, somebody. And the result of that is that some prisoners are begging judges to kill them. And so we can find out more about this and an ongoing, uh, ongoing news at solitarywatch.com yes. and also look for your writings at motherjones.com. Yes.
Yes. Okay, well, thank you, James Ridgway, for talking to Reason TV today. I'm Nick Gillespie.